Hey guys, how are we? Today I have a video on how I illustrate. I uploaded a couple photos to Instagram and a bunch of you were asking how I did it. So I thought I should show you now. So I currently illustrate on my phone. Yes, I know for a designer this is not ideal, but this is actually the perfect way to test it out and see if you like it. I use the app Procreate. Now, I'm sure most of you know about Procreate if you are interested in this kind of digital illustration. I found this app through a couple creators who I absolutely love. Firstly, Gal Schur, I think that's how you pronounce it, correct me if I'm wrong. He does amazing work and he also records some of his tutorials and uploads them to YouTube. So they are just honestly so relaxing and satisfying to watch. I love it. And also Bonnie from Studio Bon here in New Zealand. She also creates the most beautiful, amazing work. I will link both of their accounts below because they are definitely worth a follow. But yeah, they kind of gave me an insight into this app procreate and it is honestly the most amazing app like i am in awe of the different kinds of illustrations and designs that people come up with it is amazing however this app was specifically designed for the apple ipad now if you don't have an ipad that can be a little bit of an obstacle <laughs> and i don't but they have created a version for your iPhone. So if you are considering getting into digital illustration or you're just interested or you just want a bit of entertainment for yourself, you can download the version for your phone and it's actually less than half the price of the iPad version and it doesn't mean you have to fork out $2,000 to buy an iPad. If you do download it, I would actually highly recommend getting a stylus pen too. Now the app does work. You can use the touch screen like it works with your hands but you can't really create the most accurate or detailed designs with it. So yes, would highly recommend getting a stylus pen. The one I got was the Adonit Pro 4. Really good little pen, and as you can see, it's got the disc on the end, so it works with the touch screen. It has helped me and been a great advantage in terms of design. Honestly, I would highly recommend. So I thought I would just jump on my phone and show you guys all the basic tools that I use and just kind of how the app works. So when you open up the app, this is what you'll see, just your most recent work and some options to select, import a photo. And on the right hand side, you have a plus, which you can create a new canvas with. Now it has all these preset dimensions and then you also have the option to go custom size and fill in your preferred specs and go create. So then it opens a new canvas for you and you can actually zoom in and out to see how big your canvas is. And then it also has some modify tools up the top here. This is to kind of adjust your pen tools and illustration once you've got some work down. So I'll show you that in a sec. But the main tool you're going to use is the brushes. And they have a ton of preset brushes, into, including calligraphy style, painting style, artistic, airbrushing, texture. Honestly, the list goes on. There's so many options that you can use. And, but what's also really great is you can actually adjust the properties for each pen. So you can really customize it to how you like to use it. You can also duplicate them, you can download them. There are a bunch of different ways you can use these brushes. The main ones I like to use are Studio Pen, Gel Pen, Technical Pen, and for shading style designs, I often use Bonobo Chalk. It kind of depends on the design that you're creating. For example, I'm just going to stick with Studio Pen to show you guys, but you just click done once you have chosen your color, once you have chosen your brush. You've also got an eraser tool, which is usually set to the brush that you were using, which is really great. You've got layers, and here you can just create groups and new layers. You can also click the layers and create them as a mask or an alpha lock, or you can fill the layer. There's a bunch of very similar Adobe type filters you can use on your layers. And then you also have the color palette. So there's a few different ways you can look at the colors. They've got the disc where you can kind of drag the color around, choose what you like, also drag it around here. You've got the classic, which I use often. It's a lot easier with the one color for me. And then you can drag this line down the bottom. But they also have this way of looking at the colors. It's totally up to you and your preference and how you use and design with color. And there's also a bunch of pre-made palettes that they've got here. And again, you can also download palettes as well, which is really great. So what I might choose is just for an example, I'll show you how I draw a leaf as an example. 
very easy little basic shape. You just go around to the green. We want a slightly more cool tone green, less yellow I'm thinking. And then you hold down on the little circle and as you can see the left side is the previous color that I had. And as you move it around it is showing you the different color options for your new color. Now I want something kind of faded, mid-tone, maybe a little darker because we can create a highlight on it. So let's try that color. So then you just go done. And these little nods, nodules on the side here, these kind of depict how thick or thin you want your pen. And then this one down the bottom here is opacity, which I don't usually play with that much to be honest but it's there if you need it. So starting with, off with a very basic leaf shape, you just hold down and connect it up. So as you can see, because I have a streamline adjustment on this pen, my lines are really smooth without me even really having to try. And you can totally color it in like this. You can just grab the circle and put it onto the leaf and there you go, it is fully filled in. Now, to make this look a little bit more like a leaf, you can go back into this color and I'm going to make something slightly, I'm going to make the color slightly lighter just to show a bit of dimension and we can put that as a highlight. So then click done. And the amazing thing with this is that I don't want to go outside the layer of this leaf because then I'm going to get green on the white space here. So what I'm going to do is go into the layer, new layer. And I'm going to create that as a clipping mask. And what that does is that it means there's a new layer on top of this. But anything I draw on this layer will only register when it's in the green space of the layer below. So you go done. So as you can see, when I draw on the white, it doesn't show. But on the green, it does. So you just got to make sure you connect it up like on that second layer. And then you can drag the green and as you can see it's created a nice little dimensional effect without actually but it actually hasn't adjusted the layer below which is really really helpful um, that's kind of the basic tools of how I use it you can do this as well on a alpha lock but unfortunately that means doing it on the current layer I would recommend creating a new layer and making it a clipping mask because it means you can adjust that so now that we have this second highlight layer, because it's a clipping mask and a new layer, you can then go in and actually erase it without erasing the green underneath. So what I can then do, just to create a bit more detail to the leaf, I can create, I can erase little lines to make it more of a leaf design. And again, this isn't disrupting the whole layer it's actually just erasing from the highlighted green you can also change the color so if we wanted to change this leaf color if i thought it was a little bit too light or dark you can go to modify and on modify you have the options here to select so i've just got that layer selected so you can move it around double double finger tap to undo this is the select tool, so you can also select it like that, freehand. Again, we don't need to select it. The little magic wand also gives you the option to change all of these. If I wanted to maybe, again, change the saturation, I could adjust this and make it a slightly more yellow green, which might work better. And then that's pretty much it. Toolbar icon. icon. So here it lets you save down and share this as a PDF, JPEG, PNG, all different kinds of formats that you need. It also gives you the option to record your whole process, which is amazing to watch back. And on the canvas option, it also gives you canvas information. So this tells you when it was created. It tells you the layers you used. It also tells you when you've used up all the maximum layers. I know this is different on the iPad version. It also shows you how many strokes you made. So that was only 20 strokes. That's a very quick little, quick little illustration that I did. How long it took you, which is very, very helpful. But yeah, that is it. So guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you do download Procreate, let me know. 
if actually you've tried any other apps that are like procreate i know there are some um if you've tried both and you think one's better than the other or they kind of have pros and cons to both put your comments put your thoughts down in the comments below i'd love to know if you did enjoy this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe thank you guys so much for watching i will see you guys next week bye